Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Williams, aka Dark Hammock, and I'm bringing to you what I hope is the last and final version of getting stable diffusion running on your computer system uh, with just your CPU. No need to have a high end graphics card or have a graphics card that has at least four gigs of RAM or higher. I've tested this out on a Windows 10 machine. It's a laptop running just a Ryzen 5. I have it running on my Ryzen 7. I've had it on both Windows and now and now Linux Mint. So we go. Um, we're going to go to my stable diffusion, and I'm going to show you the easiest possible way to go and do this. I did install scripts. I've spent the last two days troubleshooting everything, dealing with all of the problems, so that way you guys don't have to, like the last video and before this was all done. Um, everything is working. You can do text to image, image to image. The image upscaling is working. The GFPGAN is working. Uh, it's all working CPU only. You don't have to worry about anything. First things first. In order to get it working, I did have to install Anaconda, even on my Linux machine. So you just go, get what you need. For me, it would do this, and then after it downloads, go to your downloads, get just right mouse click, open with, oh, that was an installer. CD, downloads, and then you're just going to dot forward slash, and all you have to do is type A if you have nothing else in it, and then you're going to run that. It's going to go through the instructions. I'm not going to do it. I already have it installed. Um, basically, everything that came in, I typed in yes to it. Just the standard basic install, just yes to everything. I think there was a section where it was recommended yes or no, and I followed the recommended settings. After you have that, on a Windows install, you're going to have to install Visual Studio Community Edition. You need it for one file that doesn't build across the versions of everything that making this work for all the magic to happen you're going to have to build one file out you go to the link that's in the the readme you're going to download this on windows it's going to download when you go to install it what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have this box checked and go through and install after that you're going to need git just download it run it install it and then you're going to need to install uh, wget. Just go here, download the exe. It's just going to literally download that exe file. You're going to right mouse click. You're going to copy it. And you're going to drop that into your C drive, Windows system folder. I know normally everybody tells you not to go and do it, but I didn't want to fight with anything. And I just dropped it in there and it's working. After that, on a Windows system, reboot. Now, if you're on a Linux Mint system or possibly the Ubuntu flavors that are out there, let me refresh that because I know I updated that command. Yes. All right. On your Linux systems, you're going to open up a command prompt. You can just copy this over here, open it up, right mouse click after you have Anaconda also installed. You're going to paste this command in, type in your password, boom, done, I already have it, everything's good to go. Um, this should be all that you need. I did this after I installed Unreal 5, so if anybody comes across anything on a Linux system that you need to install another package, let me know in the comments below. I've been reading through all of the comments that are posted on these videos. I will go and update the um, readme on this file here. You don't have to worry about trying to go and do your own git 
and getting all of that stuff or github account and all that stuff set up just leave it in the comments below i'll add it to the list after that what you're going to do is you're going to come back up we're going to code or uh download this fork of it just download the zip shouldn't take that long Maybe longer than I expected. All right, now that it's downloaded, we're going to go to the Documents folder. In Windows, you pretty much want to go and double-click and go into it, and then copy the Stable Diffusion folder and copy that to where you want it. For this, on Linux, I'm just going to right-mouse click and extract. Now I'm going to copy this. I'm going right to my Home folder so I don't have to mess around with the command line, and I'm pasting it in there. All right, back to my GitHub page. We're gonna scroll back down, and you need to go and get the Stable Diffusion model. You're gonna go here to this link here. If you haven't, oh, cool, we actually get to show you how to go and get this. You're gonna come down and it's gonna pop up with this. I have an account, you can sign up, My email's plastered everywhere anyway. After you go and get that signed in, you're going to go to your files. You're going to go down here and you want to download this one. You click on it, you go and download. I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to cancel that. It is 4 gigs, could take you some time. Back to the downloads. Going to take the file. You're going to copy it. You don't want to delete it from your downloads until you know you're done with it, just in case you have a problem. Go into your stable diffusion folder, wherever you put that. If you put it in your home directory, if you put it in Windows in your documents folder, go in there and just right mouse click and paste this file in there. All right, now that the stable diffusion model is downloaded and copied over, the next thing we're going to have to grab is this model. If you noticed, I did edit this in the middle of making the, the video, so it did change a little bit. You're going to right mouse click and you can, or you can click on it. It should download. Yep, it'll download. I already have it. So we're going to go back to the downloads folder. You're copying that and you're dropping that into the stable diffusion directory. All right, so you have stable diffusion in a directory somewhere. You need to make sure you know where it's at. You have the GFPGAN model downloaded, which is a .path file, and you have the stable diffusion model, which is a .ckpt version. They're all here in this location. You can close this out. All right, now that that's done, you're going to, if you're on a Windows, you want to copy this. If you're on Linux, you're going to want to copy this line. You can just click these little icons that are over here that pop up when you mouse over. We're going to open up a terminal. For a Windows machine, you want to go into the start bar, and you're going to look for an Anaconda PowerShell, and you should get something similar to this. If you're on Linux, when you installed Anaconda, if you did everything correctly, you should go and get this little side piece. We're going to hit paste and run. After I CD to my actual directory. For me, I put it in my home folder, so CD, stable diffusion, CPU only. Now we're going to run that command. Yours is going to look a whole lot differently. This is probably like the 18th time that I've cleared it out and reinstalled stuff. 
And I haven't cleared out all of Anaconda every single time that I've done it. Alright, now that that's done, if you look over here at the my GitHub for Windows, you're going to want to run this executable file for this bat script. And for Linux, you can use the following command to go and run the run script for Linux. It should not have copied all of that. I did not click the button. There we go. Paste. All right, minus click, and you can do it. And you can open the link in Linux on a Windows machine. You come up, whatever your web browser is, and you type in the, the link address. I'm going to clip in me running a model. Came across some problems. We're going to close this out. I'm going to bring that model that I'm going to bring that image in that I created all supported formats all right so we're going to try this llama wearing a steampunk hat Painting by Tim Burton. Leaving everything alone, and I'm just going to hit submit and see what happens. All right, and that should be popping back up here in a second. Uh, looks more like Dr. Seuss than Tim Burton, but we're still going to go with it. All right, now in the extras, click and drag from your source. All right, now, and now we have the extras, which is this feature, which does the faces, the G-F-P-G-A-N. Um, you can turn that on in the text images and you can turn it on where you can fix faces when you're doing the upscaling or image to image sorry but this is the upscaler tab and i'm going to oh tell me i got rid of the picture yep i got rid of the picture that i wanted so i'm just gonna do this one had to go and clear through and sort out a bug. So we're taking the same picture we created with the image and we're just upscaling it here. See, this does not take any time whatsoever with the upscaling and the facial fixes. I believe that this is running on Vulcan. But I could be wrong. Oh, uh, this is actually downloading. All right, this is downloading the weights that it needs from here. Whichever one you pick. After you have all three of them downloaded, it shouldn't do this anymore. And it is downloading all three. There we go. Let's try the real.
All right, and you saw the difference in the other one. And we're going to try this one real quick, and we should now be able to jump back and forth. All right, and with the time difference, it was a little bit different. This took half the amount of time as the 4X, which makes sense. I just really wanted to see the anime llama again. And there you have it. Digital ups or stable diffusion working on only the CPU. Let's go with another one. Wearing a steam punk hat. I'll leave it go. We're going to see if this does anything for building better faces. I, again, I like that one. And we have another llama. And as you can see, that looks like a human face. The eyes are a little bit different, but we're going to try the same one again. And I want the same seed. To show you the difference. And we're going to go look to compare the two because it seems pretty close to me. Okay, you see what it did. This is the first one. It's kind of smoothed out and all of that. This one still has a little bit more graininess to it. You're going to have to play around with it. That might have just kind of dropped in a half-decent one. I'm sure some of the other video, or some of the other images, it might look a whole lot better in the end. But All right, if you found this helpful, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video, guys, and check you out in the next.